So welcome uh, everybody. I am Dr. Sara de la Badwaman. I am a lecturer in robotics at the mechanical engineering department at UCL. Today I'm going to talk about uh, adaptable robotics and how I use biological inspiration and embodied intelligence to improve the adaptability of robots to the environment. Let me start this presentation uh, mentioning uh, an ongoing uh, discussion regarding robots versus humans. There is a, an, uh, there is a discussion and also a concern of or robots over, overtaking the jobs of humans. As you may know, robots are well known uh, because of, the of their accuracy, efficiency, and logical ability. However, humans are much better in adaptability they can have a spontaneous uh, responses to different stimulus and also on the creative thinking. I, um, I think that the, the right approach is not to do robots versus humans, but doing robots and humans at, or robots working in an integrated way with humans in order to take advantage of all the uh, the advantage of both uh, robots and, and humans. However, in nowadays application, uh, it is not possible or is quite limited the uh, robots having working together with humans. And the problem is the adaptability. For instance, in a manufacturing environment, uh, there are many cases where robots cannot work in a safe uh, way with humans. There is still uh, a risk between them. So to overcome this limited adaptability, I am looking into biological inspiration and embodied intelligence in order to improve the performance of devices such as sensors that are normally the way that robots uh, can know the the current state of the environment and also the adaptability of the robots itself. My aim is to, I mean, currently I'm looking into big challenges, which is regarding to transformative technology in critical areas such as uh, robots for rescue, exploration, and of course for farming. In the last decade, there is a growing red rate of the population, world population. And that means that um, we have to work with uh, in better technology in order to be able to feed uh, uh, all the all the human population, but without change, uh, damaging our environment. That is one of the biggest challenges. And so far, the adaptability of the variable terrain conditions and environment conditions is one of the limitations of why robots are still not widely used in agriculture, for instance. Another area that I'm working on is also in healthcare, more specifically in robots for uh, minimal invasive surgery. Now, um, before doctors, uh, wherein they were performing open surgery, they were able to evaluate the tissue with their fingers. However, now in order to overcome limitations such as the quantity of the blood loss, tissue damage, and the recovering time of the patients, now we're using robots. However, that has put a barrier, barrier between the surgeon and the patient because they are not in direct contact and the, there is no touch feedback. So that limits uh, important capabilities uh, uh, for the surgeon. So let me start with transformative technology. So um, I don't know if you are aware about, um, about uh, Boston Dynamics. They are well known for uh, their robot dog or animal. Uh, they have really good uh, uh, capabilities to work in, in plants, for instance, for monitoring. However, there is still a long distance between what they are capable to do and what uh, goats, mountain goats, goats can do. So in this part of the research, what I'm trying to do is to improve the mobility of the robots in unstructured environments, taking the inspiration from the mountain goats. 
as you can see, uh, they are able to, uh, to walk even over almost vertical, dam, uh, vertical structures such as this dam. And as you can see, uh, I believe that there is an important role that the hoop is playing on the adaptability of the, of the hoop of, on these terrain conditions. So in this part of the research, what I did is I, I tried to find how the hoof facilitates the, the adaptability of the goats to these uh, terrain conditions. For doing that, I took into account the morphology of the hoof. That means the bone structure, the shape of the claws, the tendon distribution, the ligaments. I took into account the shape of the claws because according to biologists, um, they say that goats are able to climb over these vertical dams is because they have sharp ends. So that allows them to put actually all the weight on the tip of the claws and they can catch small cracks. And that's how they can basically catch the crack with the tips and walk in this kind of uh, and, uh, vertical terrain conditions. Another important feature that I took into account was the pad, which is a shock absorber uh, where that is useful for the goats when they are walking in this kind of environment. My objective was to not exactly replicate the biological hoof. So instead of having uh, in each joint two degrees of freedom, I just took one of them. And for that, I, I got the, the roll, uh, the yaw and the pitch. And also because um, compliance is an important feature in the adaptability of the mechanisms of the uh, to the environment, I also uh, took uh, use uh, springs in this case to change and study the, um, the effect of changing the compliance of the joints on the, on the hook. So in order to evaluate the performance, I, I took the criteria of the slip resistance because if a goat slides in, the, in, in their natural terrain condition, that will uh, um, mean that it will die, it's very likely to die. But in the robot uh, environment, it means that it will lose control. It may damage the, the body of the robot and also implies uh, spending extra amount of energy by, that they need to recover from, from the slide. So in order to, to somehow simulate that sliding scenario, I, I use um, an XY stage that allows, allows me to slide the hoof at a constant speed. And as you can see, depending on the compliance on the joints, you can see this vibration-like uh, behavior on the hoof, which by looking at the position and the force, it is similar. Um, it is a stick and a slip behavior, which is similar to the ABS system in the cars. So what I mean with this is like when the, when the road is wet and the, um, the, the, the wheels start losing control, uh, Sorry, start uh, start to not uh, have enough traction with the with the surface. The ABS system, what it does, it breaks and release and breaks and release. And with this behavior, what it does, it uh, it avoids to lose control, and that improves the stability of the system. And what we found is that the goat hoof actually, this robotic hoof, uh, is exhibiting the same behavior. But this behavior uh, depends on them and the compliance of the joints. For certain compliance, uh, this behavior doesn't appear. So having uh, evaluated the slip resistance of the, uh, of the hoof and the several behaviors that it arise because of the interaction between the compliance of the, uh, of the joints and the environment, I also look into the anisotropy of the hoof and I found that when the the orientation of the clothes and the sliding force are aligned, it is the highest one, the highest slip resistance, which 
it makes sense because normally, uh, I mean, when goats are uh, climbing downhill, the the weight is uh, is the is the force that it is uh, making them slide. So that is aligned actually with the with the orientation of the cloth, and that uh, when that orientation is the same, actually is the highest. To further understand what is the importance of the compliance of the joints, I also use an analytical model. And for that, I use the Lugre friction model because it allows me to, to embed that stick and slip behavior. And what I found, the main findings of this analysis was that from all the three of the three joints, the one that has the highest impact, the compliance, is the yaw. And it is related to the opening and closing of the, of the yaws, of, of the claw, which is in line with what biologists talk about the breaking system of the, of the goats. They, they say that it is similar when you are skiing in the snow. So you, when you uh, move inwards the ski, um, the, you break, but when you move outwards, you gain speed. So since the goat is using this ABS-like behavior, it should be able to break and gain speed, break and, and gain speed. And basically this joint, the yaw is the one that is allowing to, to, uh, to allow this movement. And that's why it is important. And from the other two joints for the pitch and the roll, the roll, the roll uh, it, has, it has a minimum, it has a minimum uh, contribution to the slip resistance. So this allow us to, to further in, I mean, in the next uh, stage of the research, allow us to simplify even further the, the goat hoof to only two, two joints. That means that uh, at the end of, the, of this research or in the future, what we are aiming is to build, put together this hoof in an actual uh, robotic quadruped and um, it's better to have less joints because uh, the dynamics will be, uh, um, no, the maintenance will be much better. And it, yeah, that is one of the main reasons. And also I, I wanted to share with you this video because while I was working on the development of, of this robotic hoop, um, Mark Rayberg from Boston Dynamics, the ones who created the, the robot dogs, the, the most adaptable one and the eight Atlas as well. Uh, he came to UCL in London to present the research. Um, actually, because he knew that I was working on that, he invited me to also present my, my robot. Uh, another area where I'm looking also in the adaptability as mentioned earlier is in healthcare. And for that, I took into took as an inspiration on how humans palpate. As you can see here, the examiner is able to differentiate the edges of the organs. That means that um, is able to differentiate between uh, different uh, soft tissues. But in the right side, you see that. Uh, it can even differentiate between hard tissue, which is in this case, the bones and the other soft tissues as well. And as I mentioned earlier, my aim with, this, with my research in healthcare is to bring back that, uh, that direct contact between the surgeon and the are the, and the patient during minimal invasive surgery using a, a robotic system. And for that, I am working with Duncan Ray, who has developed um, a soft haptic sensor, which uh, allows sensing the force, the interaction force between the sensor and the examine tissue. And our aim is to use that information to give a uh, touch feedback to the surgeons. So let me start explaining uh, the structure or the, comp or the components of the soft sensor. The soft sensor has an el elastic membrane which contains tracking points. 
these tracking points are uh, are important because we need to we are tracking the displacement their position using a usb endoscopic camera as you can see here by by change uh, due to the interaction with the examine object the, these these tracking points displays what is important or or the novelty of this um, of, of this sensor, it is that it is able to adapt uh, the sensing range and the sensitivity in line on demand without having to remove it from the body. And how we achieve that is by changing its internal pressure, which is doing through this inlet. Here in this video, it shows how by how it, the the tracking points position changes depending on the interaction between the soft membrane and the object. So an additional thing that we did is that normally in a real case a scenario, the, the, the sensor normally is not always examined in a perpendicular way, uh, the tissue, it, it cannot be guaranteed. There is always an angle, so that's why we also analyze. Uh, we in with this sensor, we don't only measure the magnitude of the interactive force, but also the angle in around the x and the y axis. And something that I have to highlight also that for doing that mapping between the displacement of the tracking points and the force, the and the different angles. Uh, we use a neural network in order to, to do that mapping. Our results show, as you can see, that the higher the pre internal pressure, the higher the, the ranging or uh, the, the range of the force and, uh, of the sensor. However, in the sensitivity is the opposite. The higher the pressure, the lower the sensitivity. Something else uh, that it is also really important is that the sensitivity changes across the sensing range. So for instance, for, the, for these six kilopascals, um, for lower force, uh, the variability is higher compared to when it is uh, two newtons, for instance. And Regarding the normal force sensing, what we found is that the maximum uh, error was given for the highest pressure, which was six kilopascal, but it was only 3.92% of the force sensing range. Something that I wanted to illustrate with, uh, with this slide is that, as you can see, these are the, the, the tracking points and as you can see in the, the tracking points that are closest to the uh, contact, point, contact point between the force and the, and the membrane, they displace the most compared to the ones that are far away. And just by comparing, uh, in order to evaluate also the performance of the sensor, we, uh, we measure uh, for different internal pressures, but I only took the, the, two, the minimum and the maximum because I wanted to show that the force sensing, uh, the error for measuring the force, uh, the lowest was 0 0.17 for the lowest pressure. And the highest one was for uh, six kilopascal, which was only 0 0.28 Newton. For the angle uh, in Y, also the, lo uh, the lowest one was for the lowest pressure, which was 0 0.027 radians. And for the highest pressure was 0 0.032 radians. However, something, uh, the, something interesting is that the, uh, the rotation in the angle of X doesn't depend uh, on the, um, on the internal pressure. So the, we found that it is not, the variation is not statistically significant. So what are the next steps? Um, in the area of transformative technology is to evaluate the performance of the hoof in a quadruped robot. 
And also the most important thing is to scale down the size of the whole system. Because um, if we do the comparison with, uh, with the goat, the size of the hoof of the claw is like 26 centimeters, uh, 26, 26 centimeters in terms of, uh, of the length. And the weight is like 50 kilograms. But that is too heavy for, uh, for a farming application because that will uh, uh, um, how say, uh, compact the soil. So we need to scale down in at least to the 10% of the size. That means like taking a hoof size of 2.3 centimeters and uh, the same with the weight. And there are a lot of challenges in minimizing because we cannot guarantee that the same behavior like the stick and slip behavior will appear because of the minimization uh, uh, by changing the size of the whole system. In the terms of the healthcare, we need to evaluate uh, the performance of the system using a complete haptic feedback system. That means uh, not only having the sensor but also an actuator, a haptic actuator, and try to give a transparent feedback to the, um, to, to the surgeon. And another challenge is to scale down the size of the sensor because we are aiming to use it in a minimal invasive surgery where uh, in the current, uh, in the current um, design, the, the external diameter of our sensor is 20, uh, 20 millimeters. So now we need to scale it at least 12. Uh, so it can actually fit in a trocar of 12, sorry. And I would like to thank you for the attention to this presentation. And I will also uh, thank to my collaborators and the funding bodies of this project, which is the Senecid and the UKRI EPSRC. Thank you very much.